Hey, welcome back to our video series where we're using the free tier version of Cisco Modeling Labs CML to do a series of CCNA and Encore Labs. And in our previous video, we took a look at how to create VLANs on a single switch. We're going to build that topology out a little bit in this video, and we're going to be creating a trunks. And a trunk has the unique ability to carry traffic for multiple VLANs over a single connection. So we're going to configure a trunk port as opposed to an access port, which belongs to one and only one VLAN. Let's go out to our CML topology and start building it out. Here we are at the CML dashboard. I'm going to click Add, and we want to add a topology. I'll call this Trunking Lab. And this topology is going to have three layer two switches. So under our Add Nodes dropdown, I want to select the IOL, iOS on Linux, L2. We'll do one, two, three of those switches. Now let's give them names. The uh, switch at the top, I'll name that SW1 for switch one. The one in the lower left, I'll name it SW2. The one in the lower right, we'll name SW3. And now we can interconnect them. Let's add a connection from S1 to S2. I'll say Ethernet 0 slash 0 going to Ethernet 0 slash 0. Let's add a connection between switch 1 and switch 3. We'll say add link and we'll go from Ethernet 0 slash 1 on SW1 to Ethernet 0 slash 0 on SW3. We've now created our link. And now let's start our lab by going under lab and say start lab. We'll wait for all of these to become green check marks. And I sped through that portion of the video for you so you didn't have to wait. But we have green check marks everywhere now. And now we want to give some base configurations. Let's go to SW1. I'll right click and say console, open console. And just as I did in the previous video, I'm going to apply some basic commands that I give to just about any switch when I'm setting up a topology. I'm just going to copy and paste those in here. So we've got a base config for SW1. And as a time saver, I have paused the video and in the background, I've already applied the base configurations to SW2 and SW3. So we can begin our trunking configuration now, starting here on SW1. The first thing we want to do is add some VLANs. We said that a trunk had the unique ability to carry traffic for multiple VLANs over a single link. And if I do a show VLAN brief right now, other than those FDDI and token ring VLANs that we pay no attention to, I've only got one VLAN, VLAN 1. Let's add a few. I'll say, let's add VLAN 100. I don't really care about giving it a name. I'll say, let's add VLAN 200. And let's add VLAN 300. So now, if I do a show VLAN brief, I've got these four VLANs that we can experiment with. VLANs 1, 100, 200, and 300. Now let's configure interface Ethernet 0 slash 0 on SW1. That's the interface going out to SW2. Let's configure that as a trunk port. So let's go into interface configuration mode for Ethernet 0 slash 0. And uh, the first thing I want to do to set up a trunk is say, what trunk encapsulation type do I want to use? And in almost all situations today, we'll want to be using IEEE 802.1Q, not the older Cisco ISL. However, if we leave it to auto negotiation, we very well may end up with the older Cisco ISL, the interswitch link, which we typically do not want to use these days. So I'll say switch port, trunk, encapsulation. Let's get some context sensitive help. And I want to specify .1Q as my trunk encapsulation type. Now, I'm going to go into this interface and say, I want you to be a trunk port. No option. Don't be an access port some of the time. Don't be a trunk port, maybe. I'm saying be a trunk port. To do that, I'll say switch port mode trunk. And when I enter that, I have forced that port into a trunking mode. But did that bring up a trunk with SW2? Well, maybe. You see, our Cisco switches are running a protocol called DTP, the Dynamic Trunking Protocol. And what it can do is have one switch send a DTP frame out to a neighboring switch saying, hey, do you want to be a trunk? And if one side initiates the sending of those DTP frames and the other side is willing to become a trunk if it receives those frames, then yes, a trunk will be formed. So I'm curious. Let's go over to switch SW2 and see, do we have a trunk? 
Let's do a show interfaces trunk command. And yes, we do. It says that we do have a trunk. We are in the auto mode and in the dynamic auto mode, that means that by default, this port on SW2 is not going to be a trunk. However, if it receives the DTP frame, it will become a trunk. And when we set Ethernet 0 slash 0 on switch SW1 to the trunking mode, that caused it to send DTP frames. They were received by SW2 and we are trunking. And notice that the encapsulation type was negotiated. We were told by SW1 to use .1Q. Let's go back to SW1 and let's set up a trunk with SW3. And let's try a different mode this time. Let's go into interface configuration mode for Ethernet 0 slash 1. Again, I'll specify that I want to use .1Q trunking. We'll say switch port, trunk, encapsulation, .1Q. Now I'll say switch port, mode, and instead of saying trunk, I'm going to say dynamic. So if I don't have an agreement with the other end to become a trunk, we'll be an access port. I'll say my mode is dynamic, and with dynamic, I can say dynamic auto or dynamic desirable. And we've seen now that our switches are by default, at least these switches are by default, in dynamic auto mode, which means they will remain an access port unless somebody sends them a DTP frame. Well, if I set this side of the link between SW1 and SW3, if I set this side to dynamic desirable, desirable is going to cause SW1 to send DTP frames down to SW3. And a trunk should be formed without me having to do anything else on SW3. So I'll say dynamic desirable. I'm desiring to become a trunk. And let's go over to SW3 and see if a trunk was indeed brought up. Let's do a show interfaces trunk. Yes, indeed. We have a trunk now going from SW1 to SW2 and also from SW1 to SW3. Oh, by the way, back on SW3, notice it says the VLANs that are allowed and active in the management domain is just VLAN 1. If I look at that on switch SW1, if I do a show interfaces trunk command, you'll see that it's allowing VLANs 1 and 100 and 200 and 300. It's allowing all those created VLANs to flow over that trunk. Why don't we see the 100, 200, and 300 VLANs on SW3 or on SW2? Those switches don't know about those VLANs yet. We haven't created them. And that's going to be what we configure in our next video. We're going to see that instead of having to go to every single switch in our topology and create duplicate VLANs on every switch, we can use a protocol called VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol, or some literature calls it the VLAN trunk protocol, but we can use VTP to advertise those VLANs and have them automatically created on all the switches in our topology if we want to. So for now, let's just focus on switch SW1 and let's say that we don't want all of these VLANs to go over the trunk down to SW2 perhaps. Right now we have VLANs 1 and 100 and 200 and 300. What if we don't want VLANs 200 and 300 to go down to SW2? Maybe for security reasons or maybe for performance reasons because maybe we know there are no members of those VLANs off SW2. So why even bother sending the traffic down over this link and taking up bandwidth? So what I want to do is to prevent VLANs 200 and 300 from going over that trunk. And we have some different ways of doing that. I want to show you a couple of options. Let's go into global configuration mode and we'll go into interface Ethernet 0 slash 0. And if I say switch port trunk allowed VLAN, I can start to specify what VLANs I want to allow over this trunk. And notice I have some different options here. I could give a list of VLANs that I wanted to allow. I could add VLANs onto an existing list. I could say allow everyone. That's what it is by default. I could exclude certain VLANs. I could say, nope, don't allow any VLAN traffic across. Or maybe I've got a list of VLANs and I want to remove specific VLANs from that list. Let me show you a couple of ways to achieve our goal of preventing VLANs 200 and 300 from going over that trunk. One way is to say, allow all VLANs except, and I'll say 200 comma 300. Let's see what the result is there. Let's do a show interface trunk. Have I prevented VLANs 200 and 300? I have, but it looks sort of odd, doesn't it? It gives me these ranges of VLANs, 1 through 199, 201 through 299, 301 through 4094. 
it has just skipped over the VLANs that I wanted to exclude, VLANs 200 and 300. So technically that met our goal, but in this instance, when I said I wanted to exclude VLANs 200 and 300, what I really wanted to do, let's say, is just allow VLANs 1 and 100. So I could do that. Let's go back into interface configuration mode for Ethernet 0 slash 0, and let's say switch port trunk allowed VLAN, and now I'm just going to give a listing of the specific VLANs that I want to allow. And I'll say 1, 100. What does that look like? Let's do a show interface trunk command, and this looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? It says we are allowing VLANs 1 and 100, and we're disallowing VLANs 200 and 300. And that's a look at a couple of ways that we can create a trunk by forcing a port to become a trunk, by using DTP to negotiate the formation of a trunk with the other side, and we've seen a couple of ways of limiting which VLANs flow over a trunk. Now in our next video, where we take a look at VTP, we'll want to begin with this topology. So I want to save our existing configuration, and to do that, just to be safe, I'm going to do a write on all of my switches. I'm going to go to Nodes. I'll select all nodes, say Extract Configs, and once that's done, I'll go to Lab and say Download Lab. And that's going to download a YAML file, which we can then import in our next video, and we can begin with this existing topology and configuration. And on that note, we will wrap up our free tier CML lab on trunking. I'll see you next time.